What's up guys? Welcome back to our channel. My name is Harsh and in this video I am going to show you how you can make this awesome car. This is a simple car that you can control via the phone and the technical name for this car is a IoT controlled smart car. So we will be making this today. It is a very simple process and we did a workshop on this but it's actually in Hindi so if you are a Hindi listener you can check that video out. We will have this we will have that video link in the description below. So, without wasting any time, let's get started. Okay, so first up we have our wheels and these are simple bow motor compatible wheels as you can see. So, they have this little notch on the back side. So, that way they are able to grip the motor shaft pretty tightly. Then we have our main chassis over here. So as you can see, this is a simple 4x4 chassis. And at the bottom, you can see that these two motors are connected together and these two motors are connected together. So that way we have a track system type driving capability. So these two motors will work together and these two motors will work together at the same time. Then we have our ESP module that will allow us to communicate to the vehicle and provide the necessary and provide the signal necessary for the running of the motors and communicate with our smartphone as well. Then here is our motor driver that will drive the motors and it has four input pin as you can see over here which are input 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and E and A and E and B which is basically for speed control which we'll be using this in this project and two motor outputs A and B over here. And then to power it all up we'll be using this 18650 battery pack so these are three batteries connected in series and provide a equivalent voltage of 12 volts around with full charge so that way our motors don't need to hunt for power so all the parts are done now let's start building so first i will mount the esp and the motor driver onto this base plate over here that i have created and this is just a simple hardboard that you can find in the notepads or the class pad that you use so I have taken it from there so just take your ESP and make sure that the USB is pointing outwards not inwards so that way you will be able to program it via the USB cable so just place it like so and then just screw it in place okay now we can mount this base plate onto the frame or the chassis itself so just uh, line it up properly and I have already installed these stands off over here so that way the there is some space left here so that I can place the battery inside so just Take your screws and tighten in place and it's just the way i have designed it you can your design might be different so don't worry about that okay so now what you have to do is connect our motors to the motor driver itself so i have connected the both motors together by these two wires so these two wires can directly go to this terminal over here which will power the motors so just you have to all you have to do is just place them inside this terminal and then screw it from the top just like so and as you can see i have placed the esp upside down so the connections might be a bit tricky to do but i will link the circuit diagram in the description you can check that out from here you can check that out and do the connections accordingly so and connect the pins of the motor driver ESP so on the motor driver there are total of four pins that controls the direction of the motor so input 1 and 2 controls the direction of motor A and spin them in clockwise or anti-clockwise direction and input 3 and 4 controls motor B which provides the signal for clockwise or counterclockwise rotation of the motor and you also wondering what are these two pins so these two pins are for the speed control so we obviously want both of these sides to be controlled by the same speed so I will be using this harness this is a simple 2 to 1 wire and i have just to place them on top of pins and then we can provide a signal from a single pin to both of these pins so that they spin equally okay so to connect it 
to the ESP first we will take our speed control and connect it to the pin number D2 on the ESP so D2 pin on this side so it is from D0 D1 D2 so this is the third pin from here I will connect it over here then the input 1 of the motor driver is connected to pin number D3 so D3 is right next to D2 I will connect it right over here and then the input 2 is connected to pin number D4 so it is right over here and then we have a 3.3 volt and ground pin after that again we connect the input 3 to D5 and then finally the input 4 to D6 now that our connections are done all the only thing left is to power this up so I am just uh, supplying 12 volt power supply to these two terminals via the battery and from here the voltage regulator of 5 volts will be will supply the power to the ESP so let's do the connection for that so the leftmost terminal is for the positive 12 volts or 35 volts input and I think 35 volts is the maximum this can handle the middle pin is the ground so as you can see now we have to take the ground wire and connect it to the ground of the ESP so one of the grounds for ESP is right over here in this pin and then the 5 volts can go to the voltage input of the ESP which is this pin over here now I will just plug in the power and see if everything is working correctly or not so just plug it in and see if the light is blinking on the motor driver or not check whether you have done anything wrong or not so as you can see the light is glowing on the motor driver and it is also light on the ESP model because I can see the blue light reflection from the base over here so all of our connections are now done now we can go ahead and program it via the USB port okay before we do any coding on the Arduino app first of all we need to make the application that will run our car so I am on the blink app over here and after logging in you will get this screen so first you have to do is click on the new project icon and then you have to give the project a name so I will just name it uh, car for now and then in the hardware selection we have to select the node mcu version which is i think right over here so this is the version over here node mcu click ok then the connection type will be wi-fi so we'll, it is already selected and there are a lot of connections so you have ethernet wi-fi usb gsm bluetooth and ble so if you are working with any other of these devices you can use that but for now we will be just using wi-fi then click ok and then click on create and now it has sent an authentication token to our uh, email account that we have registered it from so that authentication token you have to place in the Arduino IDE and I will show you where in just a second so just click on OK and then you will get this nice screen area where you can place your buttons and sliders and whatnot for your project so first of all we will be adding our buttons so four buttons in total we have to add one for forward one for reverse one for left and one for right so let me just place them in a way that you will be able to understand just like so and we can then add a slider and this will allow us to control the speed of the motor and that will increase or decrease the speed of the car now here you have to make sure that you put in all the values that are in accordance with your code that you will upload to the ESP so there are a number of pins that you can use in the blink app so if you click on a slider or a button you can see that here is the output and it is set to pin so you click on it and you can select a digital pin or a virtual pin and in this case we will be using the virtual pin so i have clicked on the slider and it is the speed control so it is set to v1 in the code so i will click on v1 and click on ok and set the value from 0 to 255 which is the maximum analog value that uh, the motor driver receives for the full throttle and then name it speed just like so and once we hit back you can see that it is a slider now as speed shown next 
we have the forward button so we will click on the topmost button name it forward and select our pin which is also a virtual pins and it is set at v2 in the code so we will select the v2 over here as well the values will remain unchanged you know you can leave them by default at 0 and 1 then we have the mode which is basically a push type or a switch type so when you push the button it will just uh, send the signal out and once you lift your finger off the screen it will turn off but in the switch you have to just tap it once to turn it on and tap it once to turn it off so for this particular build i will be using the push style method and then you have to repeat this process to all the other buttons so let's click on the light button select the pin which is going to be b4 and name it right again with the left select the pin which will be v5 click ok and name it left and finally the reverse button you can name it reverse or backwards or whatever select the pin to virtual and to v3 and once you are done with your project you can just go to the upper right corner and click this play button start running the app and you can see you can now move the slider up and down and change the values and you can see that you can get the values displayed on the slider as well and all the on off button work pretty fine and the notification up here is you get is that the car was not online yet so we haven't uploaded the code to the car yet which will be the next step to do so let's switch over to a computer and do that after installing the extension first we have to select our board because uh, some of the libraries don't work unless you select the particular board so go just go to tools and in the boards option after installing the extension you will see that we have two options arduino avr boards and esp8266 boards so here what you have to select is node mcu here it is node mcu 1.0 esp 12e module most probably it will be your module as well but uh, if it that doesn't work you can try the 0 0.9 12 module but for me the 12e model works fine so i will select that and once you select that these libraries will be working so we have two libraries over here esp 826 wi-fi and the blink simple which is installed externally then we will assign the characters of our network name and network password so here you have to type in your network name in the double quotes and then the password here and make sure that it is exactly as same as the network name you know no small or capital letters must be misplaced then we will place our authentication token over here which we have received while creating the blink app you will receive this in your email after that i will skip these just for now but uh, i will show you what actually happens over here so first of all we have to set up the pins to tell the esp that these are out pins so we have selected this over here so d3 d4 d5 and d6 are selected as output spin over here so they know that they have to output some sort of value in this case which is 1 and 0 to the motor driver itself and then we have the simple library functions that will be handled by our library so don't need to worry about that then let's go back to the top so we have here our virtual pin v1 which we have set for speed control and the speed control is actually an analog write rather than a digital write like over here so this is why we don't need to define the d2 pin as output so first of all we have an integer pin val it is set to receive the value of parameter as integer so the parameter as integer means that it will receive the value of v1 put it in pin value and then the pin value will write that value to d2 I know it's a bit of confusing but uh, after some coding and few problems something you will be able to see what's happening here and the same thing happens over here so v2 whatever value receives to v2 first go to the 
parameter is int over here that stores to forward and then those forward value are written to d3 and d5 and on the right you can see i have written on the comment line as well so d3 is connected to input 1 d5 is connected to input 3 so we know that if we supply a positive voltage to input 1 the motor a turns forward and similarly if we supply the positive voltage to input 3 the motor b runs forward and here the just the reverse of that is happening so both motors in input 4 and input 2 will run in reverse over here now on the left and right section over here you can see that we have a combination of pin number 4 and 5 so pin so if we take a look at the pin number 4 pin number 4 is input 2 which will move the motor b forward and d5 will move the pin backwards so this way the car will turn on its right side and similarly we will just reverse the process to turn it to the left so this is the code explanation once you have selected your boards and the com port so just select your port over here let me just connect my arduino let me just so you have to select the ports so let me just uh, connect my esp so as you can see it is connected at com4 i will just select that and once you are happy with your code you can just click on this upload button and it, it will upload to the esp and when it's uploaded we can finally do a test run so now that the programming is done we can go ahead and start putting the wheels and it is always the best idea to check the direction of the motor whether they are spinning correctly or not and if they are spinning incorrectly you have to just switch these wires around and from there you will be good to go so after that you can just place your wheels place your battery in place and now we are finally ready to go off-roading okay so i have everything powered on and here is my phone it is out of focus but uh, you will get the idea so if i press the forward button it should move forward and if i change the speed to full you can see that it will move a bit faster so there you guys it is a pretty simple project you can create it very easily so thanks for watching the video please like subscribe and share and i will catch you all later